Hey everyone, it's Tuesday the 30th of April and it is now 20 to 4 in the afternoon. That might be why my cats are um, active at the minute because they know it's getting close to their dinner time. Anywho, today's video. I've got a box full of die cast here to go through which I got from the die cast guy on Sunday plus a few extra bits. Um, Plus, there's just a few things that were on my mind that I wanted to chat about as well, which I'm going to do that bit first. Um, now, <laughs> the first thing I want to talk about is uh, I'm having to play the part of a plumber at the minute because, uh, well, I can't use the kitchen sink because uh, the drain, all the water trap and everything, is currently here. Um, there's nothing wrong with this bit. In fact, I only took this bit off just so I could basically just give it a flush out and a clean out. And to be honest, it doesn't smell as bad as I thought it would. Yeah, it doesn't smell as bad as I thought. I've smelt a lot worse when it comes to drones like this. A heck of a lot worse. Anyway. Um, yeah. But because it disconnected itself from my kitchen sink, I decided, well, I might as well just unscrew the other end of it and take it off and just dismantle it and flush it all out, which is what I did. The part that has broken, it's actually the silliest of little things. It's a screw that has broken. So this is the bit that goes underneath the kitchen sink. That's your, for your overflow, right? You have a rubber gasket on there, which I've got over there. Then you have your metal bit, your strainer, with a gasket that would go on the top like that. And then the screw would just go straight through that's what holds it all together and stops it leaking. Well, as you can see, there's no screw. It's It rusted all the way through. Now, I've noticed for a while now that I've had sort of like tiny little wet patches under the in the cupboard under the kitchen sink. But I actually couldn't figure out where it was coming from because all of the, the water trap there was all dry. So I was like, where's it coming from? I just couldn't find it. I didn't think to check this bit, but uh, I was poking around in that cupboard Sunday. Um, whilst there was actually a sink full of water with a couple of saucepans and some other dirty dishes in there, I'd already done one load, and I had, um, and while I was under that, I noticed that there was a lot of water under it. I thought, right, I've got a big problem here now. Little problems turned into a big problem. Then I looked up at the sink after I knocked the trap and noticed the trap is moving a lot more than it should. And then I looked up at this bit and saw this bit no longer attached to the sink. Um, so I had to empty the sink of water by hand once I washed up the pans and whatnot. I actually just used a jug and emptied it into a mop bucket. Uh, what little bit was left, I just put the jug under the um, plug hole and pulled the plug. So, I don't have any screws or anything that would actually fit that. They're either too big or too small. Um, so what I'm going to do, as I can't get another one of these until Thursday anyway, I'm going to head over to my mother's tomorrow, so I can have a look around in the workshop and see if I've got anything over there before I go spending money. If I have, great. If I haven't, I'll just go to screw fix and get another one. In fact, it'd be great if I could just get this bit with the screw, because <laughs> that's really all I need. Don't need this. This bit, fine. That bit, fine. It's the bit that holds it all together. That's not. I mean, there's a threaded metal threaded insert uh, where are we in there where the screw goes into in the middle there that's perfectly fine I mean I just got a hold of the other end of the screw with a pair of pliers and it turned out easy easy as anything so I don't know if that's a brass insert but it looks like it could be a brass insert you know 15 years worth of uh, water and gunk on it it's hard to actually tell yeah, um, this coming July I would have been in this flat 15 years. 
um, and that sink, well, the whole kitchen was all refurbished just before I moved in. Because that's the sort of thing um, these housing associations do, you know, if it needs refitting they'll do it once the flat becomes empty. Um, so yeah, this has done, it's, it's been in there at least 15 years before that rotted all the way through, but I'm still surprised. They didn't use like a brass screw or a stainless steel screw, you know, something that wouldn't rust. But nope. I guess it's because steel screw is cheaper. I mean, I'm surprised it lasted 15 years actually. But I've always just assumed that they would use a stainless steel screw. So yeah, I've got to uh, sort that out. No big deal. No, I do need to wash a plate up or anything. I've still got the bathroom sink and whatnot. We can use that. Now, next subject: classic cars. Um, so it's obvious I've got an interest in cars because I've got diecast models everywhere. <laughs> um, Again, I do like classics. So, I do follow quite a lot of um, car-related YouTube channels, especially those that like to um, revive the older cars and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> and there's one I watch. His channel's probably one of the most recent ones that I've subscribed to, like within the past 12 months. Um... It's called Tasty Classics, and he has just done, I suppose you'd call it a partial restoration on an old Triumph Spitfire. And he's had, um, he's actually had it sitting around for a few months now. You know, he did like a, a will it start on it and got it all up and running. And uh, he's recently decided, you know, to basically give it a fresh coat of paint repair the other bits and bobs that needed repairing and use it because he'd already got it running and driving safely, he'd done all the brakes and everything on it and tyres you know, got it running and whatnot. Um, and he actually painted it a non-classic colour, that was a gorgeous metallic green, I absolutely love that shade of green actually it is a real nice colour and works really well on that car um, and of course in the comments he had people now saying that he should have done it back to the original colour. One of the problems with that was it had been resprayed several times in its life, so it's like, what was the original colour? Um, and in my opinion, it does look nice. Now, I am the sort of person that does prefer to see, you know, a factory original restoration so the car's restored back to as it was when it came out of the factory however I'm not against people doing their own thing you always get the odd person here and there go mm, you've completely ruined that classic now you've turned it into a low rider or you've done this to it or you've put that on it or whatever you know I'm not that sort of person it's your car it's your project you do it your way and I still admire the car regardless of what someone's done with it, even if it's not what I would have done. <clears throat> you know, before he did the Spitfire, he had a Rover P4. Actually, he still got the Rover P4. And he did a bunch of work on. I mean, I suppose a full restoration wouldn't have hurt it, but it didn't really need it. If anything, it could have just done with a fresh coat of paint. And again, the necessary repairs, whether it had just been sat for a little while, a couple of years or so. That one, you know, I don't think that one had been sat for as long as some of the cars he gets. Because it was still pretty solid underneath. It just needed the brake sorting out, as always. You had to get it up and running and whatnot. So it needed spare bits to get it up and running and driving. And the whole front end needed bolting back on and sorting out. That was all loose. And then he decided to paint it the bottom half like a racing green colour and then put a racing number on it. Which 
you know, when he told us in the video before he did that, um, you know, in a video before he painted it all up, he told us what he was going to do with it. I didn't think much of the idea. I thought, oof, that's not going to look great. It's not going to look, <laughs> it's going to look bloody horrible. What do you want to do that for? Um, but actually, once I'd seen it, it actually looks pretty good. <clears throat> and while on the subject of cars, you know, I'm also on a bunch of Facebook groups um, related to cars and whatnot, classic cars, modern cars, and all sorts and everything in between, basically. Um, and someone left a comment on a post that said, if it hasn't got a grill on the front, it's not a car. And I said, but the Volkswagen Beetle doesn't have a grill. It's rear-engined. The um, Volkswagen T1 campers and whatnot, the old Volkswagen campers, they don't have a grill. It's a rear-engined. There's umpteen sports cars that don't have grills on the front because they're either rear or mid-engined. So like the vents or the grill that would normally be on the front is like on the sides so it sucks all the air in through there. And I said that in a comment in a reply to him and he said well I stand by my comment and I said well it's just your opinion. It's not actually fact it is just your opinion. <laughs> you know. <clears throat> Right, I'm sure there's some other things I want to talk about, but I'm going to get stuck into these uh, model cars. I'm going to turn my fan up on the next speed, actually. It's been a lovely couple of days. There's a bit of a breeze blowing at the moment, and I can see some clouds coming over. But other than that, it's been quite a nice day. And yesterday was pretty nice as well. So, Sunday morning, the diecast guy drops me a message on Facebook with a photo attached of a box of cars that he um, was offering me. Um, mostly Matchbox, there's a few other bits and bobs in there, but it was mostly Matchbox. And naturally, I said yes. <laughs> um, you know, when I went to pick it up, I got a few extra bits as well, which I'm going to go through the extra bits first. And then I can actually just put them down on the floor here, out of the way. So I've got the desk. Oh, that was the other thing. Update on one of those five pound laptops that I got from um, car boot sale. Right. So, in no particular order, I'm just going to pick them up from the desk as they are. I've got this um, Lido Ford Sierra RS Cosworth. And it is the Cosworth because um, it's actually got it written on the back. I don't think the camera's going to be able to pick it up. But yeah, it actually has RS Cosworth written on the back. And I want to run that number plate through the DVLA. Now, I have done that. Um, what was it? It was on the Vanguards. I've got a Mark I Ford Transit Police Vanguards model with a number plate on it. And just for the giggles, I bought up the DVLA website and uh, put the number plate through that. And it actually came back as a Mark I. Ford Transit. I don't know if it still exists, I don't know if it was a police van, but at least the number plate and whatnot is still on the database. So I want to do the same with this one, just to see if it was modelled you know, on an actual car. I don't know if they, some of these manufacturers do that, if they like photograph someone's car and model it on that with their number plate, or they just make up a number plate. No idea. Anyway. Next one. Another racing car transporter. Now this one, main difference is, well there's two main differences. This one's got the car with it. And it's got the clear um, canopy on the back rather than the um, amber coloured one to match the windows, the front windows. Now it's not in perfect condition. 
but it is in pretty damn good condition for its age. And there's the car as well. Now, when I picked up the other one, I don't know, what, a month or so ago now, I did Google it just to try and find out what car went with my other one, and it looked like you could just take your pick out of a number. I'm assuming these would have come with just different cars, I suppose, depending on when they were released. But yeah, there's the car. Wheels are a little bit bent there, but no biggie. Well, they often get bent on these race cars. But the fact it's still there and in reasonable condition, I think it's still a bonus. So I'm really happy to uh, have that one as well. Whoops. Not one of my external hard drives. I've, oh, I forgot to put that down. There we go. Next up. Matchbox uh, Merryweather fire engine. A later version of the other one I've got, because the other one I have is a different shade of red and got the uh, removable tyres, not these wheels. That spun really well. That was a good spinning wheel. <laughs> um, we are missing a bell from the roof, but I'm not too worried about that. I could probably find another scrap one somewhere. Might even have one in my odds and sods box that I can steal a bell from. Number 15, Kent Fire Brigade. I don't know if my other one is on the shelf, is it? Uh, no, it could be in the box. Assuming that I did actually put the other one out on the shelf. I can't remember. Right, next. Another racing transporter. I now have two of these. And the red wheels are slightly pink on this side. Yeah. Um, now this one, paint-wise, is in way better condition than my other one. And the other added bonus is, yeah, that doesn't like to stay shut, but the other added bonus is, we've got the car with it as well. Ah, that reminds me. Those tyres annoy the crap out of me when they do that. So what I like to do is just drop a little bit of super glue around the rim. So and then pull that wheel into place. Stand it up right, unfortunately. Oh, I see another one. The other one on the other side. I need doing. I'll do that in a minute. See, so yeah, we've got the car with that, which is an added bonus. I don't like this. It's got room for two. So did they come with two cars originally? I have to look that up. Either way, it's a nice van. I really do like this model. I would love to find one in, you know, near mint condition. I say near mint because I'm not really fussed about getting them in mint condition. I don't mind if they've got some marks on. I mean, like I said, that one is better than my other one anyway. I've already glued one tyre onto that one. Now this one is mint. And I've actually managed to lock the middle axle up because that's where I've put the uh, elastic band. <laughs> so yeah, it's got all the port cabin with it and it is all complete. I have uh, had the elastic band off and had a look. And the truck is mint. Nice. I mean, I've got a few of these. I don't think I've got another one in this particular green with the red chassis and whatnot here. Um, but I have got a few with the... Um, the other shade of green with the yellow, but minus all of this, it's just the flatbed lorry now. I've got one up on the shelf, I think I've got one in the box. I've actually got the other one here. <laughs> uh, I've got too many of them. Right, and 
the last one I got, separately from the box that is, is this lovely uh, Dodge Trucks. Again, it's not 100% mint, but it is in damn good condition for its age. It's all functioning, it's all complete, nothing's broken. And the tow hitch is all there. Can't wait to get this one out on display. At the moment, because I'm in the process of rearranging everything so I can build tables in here to put a Lego City on. I've actually got part of my display packed up in a box over there at the moment. Because once I've got these windows sorted, there's going to be some custom made shelves go up there. Or maybe a couple of display cases, I haven't decided yet. Where well, I'm going to put a bunch of this in, a bunch of die cast in. Right, how are we doing? It should be dry enough to hold that tyre in place. I've got one on the front here. I should do all four, but I can't really be bothered. I'm only doing them as and when they fall off. Roll that one around, just shake the excess off. Pull the wheel back. Tire back onto the hub. Get super glue all over your fingers. And then you step the fingers together, that's not a good idea. And leave that to dry. I'm guessing when these were new they didn't have this problem, that they were quite tight on the rims, but you know, with age and play wear and whatnot, I guess they've just got weaker over the years. So all I do is just dab a bit of super glue around the rim and then just bring the tire back on the rim and let it dry. Right. And there's quite a bit in this box, so we could be here a little while, at least. Number one. My third one of these. I thought I only had one over on the shelf. Yeah, no, now I've got three. Uh, but this was one of the things I saw in the photo that I actually wanted. Because at the time, I didn't think I had one of these. I had two. <laughs> I've only got one orange one at the minute. So there's that, which I will probably end up keeping because I do love to put um, cars on them and display them. Next up, and this one is going to go up on eBay. I just need to find a tyre so I can sell it as a complete model. Refuse truck. I've got another one of these in pretty much the same sort of condition. So I've actually glued all the tyres onto that because I had to find tyres for it. I am pretty certain I do have one um, in a box. I don't think that's the right side. No, it's not. That one's too big, so I'm going to put it back on this. So yeah, I'll find a tire, and that's one I'll photograph and put up on eBay. I've actually got quite a few that I want to put on eBay, but I'm not sure what's the best way to do it. You know, all the corgi ones I had, I put up as job lots. Job lots of ten. Now, I don't know if I should do that with all my spare matchbox in the box uh, I've got in the corner of the bedroom, or is it worth putting some of them up as an individual model, maybe? I think this one might be. Yeah. If I haven't got a tire, then I'll list it as it is and just say, you know, one tire missing. Right, not really my sort of thing, but I will keep it as I haven't got one anyway. Nice little race car, number 34. I know what I am going to do, I'm just going to adjust the camera a bit. I just noticed that my hand was sort of over here somewhere. I've got that. I've got another one of these Quali Toys from Corgi. That's my second one, I've got a fire truck somewhere. I've got from the diecast guy as well. Probably more for a toy collector, I would have thought, this sort of stuff. As this is more was aimed more for, you know, real small kids. I've no idea what was meant to be on the back of that. Cracking the windscreen, but I think the fire truck is the same style cab. 
I haven't got it in here, so I can't compare it. That's in a box in the other room. Right. That one don't belong there. I've already seen that one. Now somewhere I've got a tire laying in here. There it is. See, this is why I super glue the tires on. I can't get it because it's just falling at the bottom of the box. Now, I have got one of these complete. Um, obviously not with the logs. I'm assuming it came with logs. This one's lost its grill. I find so many of them with the grill missing. But I just want to steal this. Because so I've got a Murhill tractor. And I've got like two or three of the trailers. And none of them have the little hook on. So I'm going to steal it from this as I've already got one. And then probably put the rest of this up on eBay as just a spares repairs model. Uh, this one's another one that I'll stick on eBay. A hydraulic excavator. Actually, no, I'm going to keep this one and swap it for one of the other ones I've got because the wheels are a lot better on this. They're um, pretty heavily bent on my other one. I've got a couple with the uh, removable tyres as well. In fact, I can see a hydraulic excavator over there, but I can't see if it's got these wheels or the ones with the removable tyres. Uh, not from here. Actually, I think I could end up doing a spares repairs job lot anyway, because I've got a fork lift here with a fork missing. I suppose you could say the fork forked off. No? Okay. That was a bad joke anyway. So yeah, it's in nice condition apart from that. I don't think there's a way to get a plastic fork assembly out and perhaps replace it with a another one. And I've got them with the grey forks, I've got them with the yellow forks. I've got one with red forks and I've got one with black forks. I did um, a few variations of that, and I, th I don't know if I've got them all, but I've got a fair few of them. Uh, see, I've got quite a bit of die cast of this era as well, like the 60s. Um, and I've got a few of these ice cream vans, so I think any of these I get now will end up on eBay, because I don't need any more in my collection, I've got enough. So I did keep hold of a couple, so I could do a couple of restorations on them. In case you're wondering why I do keep multiple castings. That would be the reason. So, I don't need any more of that. Uh, here's another one that I'm going to stick on eBay. Perhaps I could put it with the um, Commer ice cream van there. That's the Studebaker Lark Wagonaire. I know I've got a couple in the collection. I might keep that one just to do a custom paint job on it. But part of me is just thinking, nah. <laughs> Don't wanna. Milk float. Now I did look on my shelf in the hallway. So I've got a shelf, a display um, shelf in the hallway displaying older matchbox like this one. Lesney, I should say. And the milk float I've got up there has got a different badge on the door. Now this one, I have got a few of these milk floats again, and this one has actually got a different uh, badge on the door to the other one. In fact, let me just go and grab it and show you. Whoops, sorry so much, I didn't realise you were down there. This one's actually in nicer cosmetic condition. You see it's got a different drink milk sign on the cab and different door stickers. Now as this one, I believe this is actually slightly better than the rest of mine I've got and I've got some really rough ones. So I'll probably keep this one. This one's got, I don't know if it's just faded because of the sun but that looks like a lighter coloured plastic window in it. I've just noticed one other difference, that's got the grey wheels on it. That's got black. Compare that with the others. I just can't get to the box at the minute. I have to 
go in the bedroom later and just have a shunt around, I think. Let me just put this one back. I need to dust that shelf again. <laughs> in fact, I need to go through the uh, shelf in the bedroom and dust all that down as well. Right, moving on. I've got another BP Exploration. I've got a handful of these, but most of them are missing tyres. I did acquire quite a few um, a couple of months ago. And they're like in various states of missing wheels or tyres. That one's actually complete. And it's in relatively good condition. I might just go on eBay and just buy a um, reproduction canopy to go on this, like I did one of my other ones. Now, I can't remember if the one I've got on the shelf has got the yellow wheels or the green. Because <laughs> they did it with both. Alright, let me try and speed things up a bit, shall we? A couple of old Matchbox Dodge trucks here. That one should have sides. And they've all been broken off. I think this might have got stood on. I thought someone may have actually cut the sides off to make a flat bed, but when I looked at that corner, you can see it's squished down, so I think that's got stood on or something in its life, and that's how it's lost it. And that one's lost its tailgate. And it's all broken. I have got a half decent one of these up on that shelf in the hallway as well. I can't remember if I've actually shown you that shelf or not. Quite a nice uh, speedboat, in nice condition at least. Even the sticker on the front there is in nice condition. I do believe I've got another one of these. I know this sticker is worn off. It's either that or I'm thinking of the police boat, one or the other. I've got loads of these, but I do like them. I do like doing custom paint jobs on them, so these will be kept. The old Austin 1100s. If you see the, uh, if you see, if you look at the wheels, they are different on each car. That one is your regular wheels, and the blue one is the later super fast version. Exact same car. They literally just put different wheels on it and changed the um, base a little bit to suit the wheels I should think. That is it, that's literally the difference. I could still um, swap the chassis so I could make that super fast if I wanted to. In fairness that's not in bad shape. Well, I've got a few more green ones, there's something icky on the side there, I have no idea what that is but it's very hard. Oh, it's just come off. And it's, and it's gone into the car now. Get out of there. There we go. I don't know what it was. It's not on there now, though. Oh, oh God. I know I've got another UD mog in there, but I can't see it at the minute. Now, for the life of me, I cannot remember if I've got one of these or not. There's another one that needs the tyres gluing on. Can't be bothered to do that right this minute. I've got the other one in here. I've got the blue one. Um, I cannot remember if I've got that. I don't know what colour you'd call it. it looks like a pink colour. I can't really tell if that's meant to be a shade of pink or like a shade of beige cream sort of colour. You be the judge. It's a nice little one though, it's going to be a keeper. This one's going to be a keeper as well, even though I have like three or four of these. The reason being, this one's got regular wheels, the other ones I've got all have super fast wheels. And that's got the hook on it as well. It's another Dodge. Dodge D100 I think, is that cab? It's like the same as the other two I showed you, this has got a crane on the back. Yeah, I'm probably going to put this one on eBay with the others as well. The Vauxhall Victor, it's been repainted, that's not the original paint colour. All I've got to do is look underneath and I can actually see the original colour. 
just along the edges of the chassis you might be able to make out the original colour there. But, uh, I have got a couple of those. I don't really want any more so... Uh, got a tracked loader, minus the tracks. So it's just a, a wheeled loader I suppose now. <laughs> Um, now I know you can get reproduction tracks on eBay, but I'm not sure. If they will, you know, fit this. If like Matchbox had like one size track fits all sort of thing. Apart from a couple of models, like this one. That would have required longer ones. That can go on eBay as well, because I've got a couple of these. Two different versions of it actually. Um, or if I would need to get specific tracks for that size for this model. I suppose I should just go on eBay and just have a look. Because it would be nice to actually get some tracks for something. So I have got another one. Somewhere. We've got a bit of a beat up Cougar drag car. I say beat up. I don't know how well it's going to come across on camera, but the rear end is actually twisted. And you can see when you look at that wheel well, you can see it's all been pushed back a bit. But maybe it had a drag race and lost. <laughs> And it's certainly sun faded. Can you see the... Yeah, you can. You can see the clear colour difference. So I don't know if that's been on display and that's why it's all sun faded or... Uh, if it's just been stored in a box in sunlight, maybe. Another one I no longer... No, I don't need. A little armoured car thing which has got a broken gun on it. So that is, that's actually five, six if I count the uh, refuse truck. That one is a definite keeper, my op the Opal Diplomat. I must have about eight of these now, but I love the bloody things. Uh, well, here's another one that can go on the Ebays. It's a Husky Bedford TK skip truck minus the loading arms. And I'll likely put this one on the eBay's as well because I've already got it. Mercedes truck and trailer. I've got it in a few colours actually. They also did that with the super fast wheels. That one's got the regular wheels on it. And another Rolls Royce. I've got a couple of these. I don't like to get rid of these particular cars with those tyres on because I do reuse them on other models. So that one, that one would actually make a nice restoration project. I could do a nice custom colour on that or something. Because there's no way I'm going to be able to replicate this metallic red. And so that would be a fairly easy one to take apart and clean up. So that's a, that's a keeper. Okie dokie. I'm glad I got these in here because I have got a couple that I need to fix. Only because I broke them. So these are the um, Kemp Fire Brigade um, Forward Control Land Rover. I was trying to think of a name. That one's got bent ladder still included. You can see the windows have fell through. Now, I've got two in reasonably good condition, actually. Um, one regular wheels, like this one, and one with the super fast, like this one. But uh, I had to do a little bit of repair work on the windows, because it had done what this one's done, and that one. So I drilled the rivets, 
and went to pop the chassis off and snapped the corner of the chassis. So what I want to attempt to do, as these are technically broken anyway, is to try and get the chassis off of these and replace them on the others at some point. Okay, next up. There's uh, another one that can go on eBay. I have got a number of these. In that same colour as well. Uh, oh, this one can go in the eBay, eBay, eBay pile. Yeah. Um, pipe truck. So I've got several of these as well. Uh, probably this one because I have got an almost mint one up on the shelf. So. So I want to keep another one over on the uh, shelf over there. Probably not. Um, whoops. Now, I've already got two of these. One's on the shelf in the bedroom and one's up here. But they've got reproduction sight huts on. That one's an original sight hut. It's just missing the roof. Um... But as it is original, I will probably keep hold of that one. Or at least the sight hat. I don't really need the truck. Drag car. Dodge charger. It's one of those when you lift it. It's meant to be like a support come down. Which is missing. Or at least I think this one has it. I'll have to check with my... Uh, Mint one in my case over there. Oh, missing all the grill as well. It's got severely bent wheels on the back. That can go in my uh, box of scrap. Then I've got another one of these. And a hovering hovering and one. And I've got one of these that my stepdad restored. <laughs> I've got several of these as well. I've lost count on how many of these I've got now. And that one actually, I think it's over eight at least. I just sort of made it a game because I acquired so many unintentionally. I thought, you know what, let's just keep going and see how many I can get. <laughs> Same with the double decker buses that I've got in a separate box in the bedroom. Every time I come across, you know, the little matchbox double decker buses, I throw one, in, throw them in that box. No idea how many I've got in there now. Right. Lincoln Continental. I've not seen one in this colour for years. I had one when I was younger. I was missing the trunk that I got at a car boot sale many years ago. Like I said, I don't know if I've still got it. I don't think I have. But that's the first one I've come across in that colour again. It's in nice condition. I'm going to swap that with um, one of my other ones. I've got a couple of them, they're not as nice as that. Right. And we have got Iron Fairy Crane. And I cannot remember if I've already got it in this colour scheme. I've got a nice one with a yellow body and a red boom and then I've got another nice one which is yellow and yellow I can't remember if I've got this one I'm going to have to uh, have a look that one's lost its hook so I'm not too worried about that one another BP Dodge truck I have got a nice one up on the shelf, and I've got several of these in a box in various uh, states of disrepair or play wear, I should say. Not disrepair. I was actually looking at this through my new magnifier. Well, new to me magnifier. I got this out of a charity shop the other day. And that is brilliant because I can just sit here like this. 
and uh, really have a good look at things. And despite how small the middle of that grill is, it, they actually have got stamped on there KEW. 526 UML is the um, number plate and even on the wings or fenders for the Americans this bit right beside the driver's door has got KEW Dodge as well how about that for detail I don't think I'd have ever noticed that if it wasn't for a strong magnifier like this I wouldn't have even moulded the door handle on the doors. I've got trim around the doors as well. Got number plate on the rear. I mean, that's a lot of detail which probably for the most part went unnoticed. Now when you think about it, these were made as toys for kids. Do you think a lot of kids would have noticed stuff like that? Or maybe they were um, finding a number of tyres laying in here now. One, not two. It might have came off the same model because they're both the same. You know, maybe they did that so they could market it at collectors as well. There's no doubt people collected die cars back then. I doubt it's. Uh, a new hobby. I mean, hey, I've been collecting it since uh, well before Facebook and whatnot was a thing. Oh, are you serious? I've even got door hinges on this one. And a federal Q siren and bell on the uh, bumper. All the handles and the lockers. I've got a couple of variations of this in um, decent enough nick as well. We've we got now we've got a Husky Lamborghini. I can't remember if I've already got this one in the box or not, so I'm going to have to have a look. I might remember where I put the box. It should be under the bed. And here's another casting I've got several of. Bed for TK BP tanker. But, despite having like a half a dozen, maybe more, only one, it's not only in pretty nice shape for its age, only one actually has the plastic interior. As you can see, this one's not got the interior piece. I've only got one. I was very excited to come across that one because it had the uh, interior piece still there. Alright, we ain't got many more in the box. A Honda motorbike from Matchbox. I have got the trailers somewhere. Another Mustang. I'm going to go through my box of Mustangs and whatnot because I've got several of this particular model. It's the Wildcat. Um, again, in various states of playwear, but there's a couple I've got which are actually quite nice. But I can't remember if they've got the uh, little engine in the front or not. I know I've got a couple where it's missing, but I can't remember which ones that was. Anywho, this is probably the nicest Ford Corsair I've got now. I have a... Um, three or four of these now and yeah this one is by far the nicest it is missing the luggage off the roof there is meant to be like a luggage rack thing on the roof this one I want to get the re or see if I can find reproduction parts for for the back because otherwise that truck is in mint condition I'm not kidding it is totally mint I've looked over it Oh, no, I stand correct. I found one. One tiny little paint chip on the corner of the body. The flatbed. 
but I think that's still worth getting the, um, if I could find it, the reproduction bracket and cargo for this. <sighs> Another bloody combine harvester. I've had so many of these over the years, they are such a popular casting. What if you got this one with the removable tyres or the other one? Uh, oh, here's another one that can go with all the others on eBay. The Greyhound Coach, I have got a number of these as well. I think I've even got one with super fast wheels. Here's the other Unimog. No, no, I've got one of these. Maybe two of these? I can't remember. This might be my third one. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that one yet. That might be kept, it might end up on eBay. And then we've got the um, Ford kennel truck. Now on the base it just says kennel truck. So I actually got curious, I was like, well, what sort of truck is it? I thought, well, it looks a bit like a Ford. And lo and behold, on the tailgate it does actually have Ford. Now I have got a couple, two different shades of green. Um, that I acquired which did not have the plastic canopy or the dogs I mean, I have four dogs in there um, but the paintwork was in such nice condition again with like just the odd little tiny little chip in the paint here and there but I went on eBay and I bought the reproduction canopy and dogs for both of them so I've got them on display as well but this one is actually different I've got it in this green but my other one's got a chrome front. This one has got a white one. I didn't realise they uh, did such a variation, but this one's got the white plastic front on it. I actually do like the style of that truck. Nearly there. Well, Rolls Royce, I've already got one of these, but this one is in better condition at the two, or am I thinking of the Jag? No, it is one of these. The um, Phantom 5. Oh, for some reason I thought there was a driver in there. Yeah. It's in pretty nice condition. Actually, the, the um, boot lid's got the worst of the paint damage for some reason. I don't know why that is. Oh, here's the other one of them trucks in the other shade of green. It's, in, it's a bit dirty on the roof there, but it's not in bad shape. It is missing all the bits for it. I'm assuming this came with a porter cabin like the other one. But this is just a different colour for it. And, you know, me and the diecast guy were talking, you know, there's certain models like this one that just aren't desirable. You know, even if they are in mint condition, I think that's one of the reasons I get quite a lot of stuff like this, because a lot of it just isn't that desirable. Probably because there's just thousands out there, even all these years later, you know, there's just still hundreds of them out there. Anywho, I'm definitely going to keep at least one of these two. I haven't decided which one, because out of all the ones I've now got, which must be a good again five six of them these are in the best shape they're not perfect either but I've got ones where they're completely scratched and buggery and bent wheels and <coughs> excuse me and whatnot um, yes yeah, so I was gonna put these on eBay because I already had some then I thought well you know they are better than my other ones I'll probably keep at least one of those, eBay one. And my other um, crappier ones I'll probably just chuck in the scrap box just for spares. Right, stack all these in here as tidy as possible then. Yeah, I don't like to just chuck them in a box. I do that with them. I don't know if you can see that in there. I sit them on the wheels and then I just sort of stack them, one on top of the other, 
I actually find it's um, less damaging to the paintwork and whatnot. And in my experience, you can actually get more in a box if you do that. So I always try to start with like vehicles of roughly the same height. Let me just move this camera a bit. There we go. I'm not going to be putting anything on eBay quite yet. <clears throat> I mean, I've got quite a large box full of assorted die cast and things in the bedroom, but what I want to do is just go through a couple of my other boxes first. Uh, and ideally, I need to make a bit of room somewhere as well. No, let's not put that one in. Let's. That is a perfect fit, that Mercedes and um, truck and trailer. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't even wrap. It is actually a perfect fit to go that way in the box. Alright. And I'm getting a Honda motorbike to lay down on top of it perfectly as well. Uh, start building the next row, I suppose, or the next layer. Austin 1100s have got a slightly higher roof line than the other ones. Tanker, pipe truck, train truck, flatbed truck. Well, at least it's a flatbed now. It's not how it started its life, but <laughs> that's what it is now. See, the other problem is there's a lot of die cast. You look on eBay like for that. You'll find loads of these on there. Um, and that's the thing with the die-cast guy, you know, he he's not really interested in stuff like that. He prefers the rarer, harder to get stuff, the more desirable stuff. Which I don't blame him, you know, that's got the most value to it. A lot of what I've got here has just not got any value to it. Or at least very little. Throw the bloody side hut truck in here. My little uh, ERF cement mixer in here. I mean, not really anybody wants these, do they? In fact, a lot of the time I just take the wheels off and ditch them. Or take the tyres off, I mean. If they're the ones with the uh, removable tyres. I know there's probably a lot of people out there that are going to hate me for doing that. There's just so many of them. I've got loads. I, I don't know how many of those I've got in the collection. I just can't get rid of them. The only downside to um, some castings. Especially when the manufacturers decided to make shed loads of a casting that nobody really wants. You know, why don't I just make shed loads of a casting that we all want. <laughs> oh yeah, one task. Yeah, one tire came off the cab. Boat that car can go in the thing. Back in the uh, car transporter. Right, I've actually got a few on the floor I'm going to put in the top of this as well. showed in a previous video it was uh, not last weekend's car boot because I wasn't one <laughs> a bit of a wash out because of the weather um, the weekend before that oh. yeah still down here on the floor from doing that video over a week ago nearly two weeks ago I don't know it takes me to do anything Yes, it does actually annoy me. 
And I bet if I had a girlfriend or a wife, it would probably annoy the shit out of them as well. I suppose that's the advantage of living on your own. There's no one here to annoy apart from me. <laughs> you know, I ain't got to worry about anyone else apart from me. Me, myself, and I. I want to get all this bleeding Lego sorted as well, so I can get the boards here for the uh, Lego tables and get those assembled because I've got a seriously big itch to get building. A big itch at the moment that I can't scratch. There go, look at that. It's only going to be a temporary thing. Temporary thing for the next six months, I expect, because uh, it might take so long to sort the die cast out. I've got about 20 boxes of uh, die cast that need sorting like this, that is. <laughs> I wish I was joking as well, that's exactly what I'm like. Whoops. Move the axles up. Move the axles up is not what I wanted to do. Come on, break that one free. Freed the front axle off, now I can't free the rear one off. There we go. That is the risk. Well, yeah, one of the main risks of gluing these wheels on, you might accidentally glue up the axles like I did, but they broke free nicely, so not to worry. It's all okay in the end. <laughs> Put these in because these are reasonably flat. These two. And drove. Have we got anything on the desk? Yeah. Not one of these sort of scout cars, I think it is. Had that for a while. I've just been trying to find uh, some tyres for it. That's oh, a field car, not a scout car. Number 18, 1969. Trying to decide what other ones I put in this. Let's put my Dodge truck in here as well. Fire engine and car transport. I would like to display both of these yellow car transports together. Well, I've got everything sorted out. So much as sneeze near it, that bloody thing opens up. Oh, I closed it, but I'm going to put the car back in. There we go. Yeah, I'm not going to stack things up too much now. I think that'll do. There we go, I'm sorted. Oh, that's got some weight in it now. Yeah, no, I'll get your food in a minute. All right, sweetie. Not snowy on the floor. Before I turn the camera off, I know what I'm like. <clears throat> you comfy? Uh, you're not really one for jumping up on laps, are you? Although she will lay on me when we're laying in bed. Won't you? You'll come and lay on me then. And you're already cuddling around me now because she wants a dinner. 
smudges quietly up on the uh, cap tree. Mew! <laughs> I just watched her yawn. It's contagious. No, I can't think of anything else. No, what I said. I've got, oh, yeah, that was it. Update on the laptop. So, I've got the little Toshiba going. Here. That was one of the two £5 laptops. Uh, although the keyboard is completely knackered on it, but I haven't been able to find another one, so... It's a bit of a bummer, but other than that, it does work. The other one, the older one, uh, which was an Advent, I think, um, it had an issue where it just kept shutting itself off. Um, actually, it had several issues. It had water damage on the screen. It would shut itself off after a while. Well, I tried to install Windows XP, which it didn't like installing. If I tried to use the um, onboard CD-ROM drive, or DVD drive I should say, it would blue screen right after it's done um, loading all the files, when it's done all that bit, copying the files and whatnot. Um, I actually changed the DVD drive for another one that I knew worked, and it did exactly the same thing, so it's not the drive. And if I use a USB DVD drive, it wouldn't do that, but it wouldn't detect the hard drive. Even though the BIOS is detecting the hard drive is there, and if I put a hard drive in it that had Windows on, it would actually try to boot from the hard drive. Um, so in the end I actually just scrapped it. I took a few bits off of it that I wanted and got rid of the rest. Here's the fan. And I think I discovered why that may have been turning itself off. I think it was getting too hot. Because fans are supposed to spin freely. This doesn't. <laughs> not, this is not bent down. I can't feel it or hear it chafing on this metal bit. So it's not that. It is just a stiff fan. So if this fan wasn't working... It would A, shut down because it's not detecting the fan, and B, get it, it would shut down because it's getting too hot, because this isn't cooling it. So, I'm not too worried that I discovered this after I scrapped it, because it just wasn't worth fixing that one anyway. <clears throat> Going to be no good. A stiff fan is no good. And besides, you know, this is still a half-decent laptop, even if it has got a dead keyboard on it. Well, a half-dead keyboard, I should say. I think this has got space to actually put an onboard CD drive on this. Because there's a panel there that looks like it pops off, but there is no onboard CD drive on it. I don't know if that screws for anything there. I actually really do like that laptop. I mean, I can use it around the flat <clears throat> or over at Mum's because I can just get a small USB keyboard. In fact, I've got a smaller USB keyboard that I can use with it. And a wireless mouse, and there you go. Wide mouse, if you prefer. <clears throat> What's your preference, Smudgy? Any mouse? <laughs> Furry mice, maybe? Alright then, let me shut down the camera and I'll get the kitties fed. So, thanks a lot for watching everyone. I hope you liked the video. If you did, thumbs up. If you didn't, 
thumbs down. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, please consider subscribing. It's totally free. does not cost a penny. Um, <clears throat> now, it doesn't just help me and help the channel grow. It helps you follow the channel and keep track of when I upload videos and whatnot. And if you check the video description down below the video, I will put links in there to my other two YouTube channels. I do have a gaming channel, so if you like gaming, you might want to check that one out. I've got a channel for all the LEGO stuff. I will link to my Discord server and my Twitch channel. So feel free to head down there and check those out as well. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.